Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love's Data. In this video, we're going to explore audiences in Google Analytics 4 or GA4. Audiences let you focus on particular user segments in your analytics reports, and you can use them in Google Ads to understand audience behavior and target your ads. We'll walk through setting up audiences, how to import them into Google Ads, plus extra tips you should know about when using audiences. Okay, let's get started. I've already logged into my Google Analytics 4 demo property, and we can select audiences from the menu on the left, just under configure. We can see there are already two audiences. These are all users and purchases. These are created automatically when you first set up Google Analytics. So all users is for everybody who's been to your website or used your app and purchases are for people who've completed an e-commerce transaction on your website or made an in-app purchase. If you haven't sent a purchase event to your GA4 property, then this will be empty. You can remove these predefined audiences, but I'll leave them for now. Before we set up our own audiences, I want to show you how you can use them with your reports. The first thing you can do is you can click on the name of an individual audience. Let's click Purchases. This now lets us view the default report for the audience. We can see the total number of users included in the audience, the number of engaged sessions, and the number of conversions. You can also see some additional cards that show some basic details for the audience. Apart from this individual audience report, you can also apply your audience to the other standard reports in GA4. Let's select Demographics, and then Overview. At the top of the report, we can see we're looking at all users. So the report includes dimensions and metrics for everybody who's been to our website. We can change this to only include one of our audiences, or we can compare two audiences or more. Let's start by adding another audience to the report. To do this, we click Add Comparison. We can then see the Comparison Builder opens on the right. Let's click Select Dimension and let's choose audience name. We can then select the audience we want to compare to. I'm going to select purchases and then click OK and then apply. We can now see a side by side comparison of the two audiences for the report. OK, let's remove the audience and let's click all users to change the audience used for the report. And then on the right, let's change all users to Purchases, and let's click Apply. We can now see the Demographic Overview report only includes users contained in the audience. And you can use a similar technique if you're creating your own reports in the Analysis Hub. You'll need to add the audience name dimension and then apply a filter for the audience you want to use for your report. Okay, now that we've looked at where we can use audiences in the standard reports, it's time to create our own custom audience. Let's head back to Audiences. And let's select New Audience. We can see there is an option to build a new audience from scratch at the top, or we can use one of the suggested audiences or the templates. And if predictive metrics are available for your property, then you'll also see an option for predictive audiences. Let's select the General tab, and let's choose Non-Purchases. We can see the audience is pre-configured for us. This includes the name of the audience, the description, and the conditions for the audience. So this segment will include anybody who hasn't made a purchase in our app or on our website. And we can see on the right, there is a summary for the number of users who are included and excluded from this audience. Now let's save this audience. We can now see the new audience in our audience list. Now let's create another audience. I'm going to create an audience for website leads. I already have an event being sent to Google Analytics when people complete a form. So we're going to base the audience on the existing events coming into my property. If you haven't configured any of your own events yet, then I've included links to my other videos and my GA4 course in the description below. 
And this time we're going to create an audience from scratch. So let's select create a custom audience at the top. Okay, so let's name the audience lead. And let's add a short description. Now let's add a new condition for our audience. And then generate lead. This will mean that my audience includes users that have triggered the generate lead event. If you haven't set up your own events like this one yet, then here's an alternate option. You can change the condition to page path. And then enter the URL you use for your confirmation page. For example, if the URL contains thank you, then you could enter this as the value. There are also options for building more advanced audiences in GA4. At the top, you can choose how events are used to include or exclude users from your audience. The people icon tells us that our criteria can be matched across all sessions, but we can change this to within the same session or within the same event. We can also expand our condition using OR and AND statements. For example, if we wanted all of our conditions to be true before users were included in the audience. Audiences in GA4 are dynamic by default. This means that the conditions you define are re-evaluated for your users, so users can be included or removed over a period of time. If you enable at any point, then the audience becomes static, or in other words, if your condition was met at any point, then they will always be included. For example, if we created an audience for people who came to our website from Facebook, then enabling at any point would mean users would be included if they came at least once to your website via Facebook. So someone finding your website via Google, then Facebook, and then YouTube would be included in your audience. If at any point was deselected, then that same person visiting your website via Google, then Facebook, then YouTube would not be included. This is because the last time they came to your website was via YouTube, so they would be re-evaluated for the audience and not be included. Other options include creating condition groups, using sequences, and adding exclusions. On the right, you can also choose the membership duration for the audience. And you can even trigger a new event when someone meets the conditions for your audience. This is the audience trigger option. When you're happy, you can save your audience. And now we can see our new custom audience in GA4. You can create up to 100 audiences per property and selecting archive will permanently delete the audience. There is no option to undo this, so be careful. Apart from using audiences directly inside Google Analytics, you can also use them to gain insights inside Google Ads and you can use them for remarketing. To do this, we'll need to link Google Analytics to Google Ads. So let's look at the steps to link our accounts. We need to navigate to the admin area and then select Google Ads linking. We can then click link. Choose the Google Ads account we want to link and click confirm. Then we click Next. And we need to ensure personalized advertising is enabled. Then we click Next again. And then we click Submit. Our Google Analytics property is now linked to Google Ads. And we also need to ensure Google Signals is enabled to make use of our audience lists in Google Ads. To do this, we need to select Data Settings and then data collection. And we can see Google Signals isn't enabled for my property, so I need to follow the steps to enable this. Okay, now that Google Signals is enabled and we've linked Google Analytics to Google Ads, our audiences will automatically become available in Google Ads. You'll find them in your Google Ads account by selecting Tools and Settings and choosing Audience Manager. It can take 24 to 48 hours for new audiences to become available. 
For even more ideas on different audiences you can create in Google Analytics, you can find a link to my audiences guide in the description below this video. What audiences are you going to create in GA4? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, then please like it so I know to make more videos like this. See you next time.